I've lost everything in cryptocurrency. I've lost it. I haven't sold. But well, I mean, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Crypto is 100% dependent on the ability for people to easily. If you're buying crypto and your hope is that you're going to get rich or it's going to increase, you are the problem. And you are the reason why crypto is not going to. Because, because like, it's just supposed to be a currency. That was like the dream originally of crypto. It's not supposed to be a way to get rich. It's just supposed to be a way to buy and sell things with like unregulated transactions that can't be marked and can be done anywhere in the world. That was supposed to be the whole point. I, I think that's a really good take. I, I, We'd be curious what you think about at the end of the day. Yeah, but the funny so thing is that like what's going to happen and what was already kind of happening with crypto is what people do is they just start slowly rebuilding financial systems. And, uh, That's, you know, I wish that like more people it. were like honest about that too, though, because like the, the scary thing about finance. What is the latest in Devin's world? You're running an agency now, yes? Yeah, we've completely changed over. So we're running an agency and we work just with brands now. No more influencers. Um, okay. I mean, we do we bring deals to influencers, um, but uh -huh. I don't like directly interact with them. So my business, uh -huh. we do two things. We do that, deal with brands and we do merch, lots of merch um, for both some influencers on YouTube and some um, brands like uh, publishers, game publishers. We do a lot like some of their game merch. Uh -huh. um, we got a warehouse, uh, bought a warehouse in Dallas, bought a warehouse in Ireland. Uh, we're killing it, man. It's good. It feels you really good. bought a warehouse, not yeah. rented. You own a warehouse. Uh, rent the one in Ireland, own one in, in Dallas. Yeah. Careful, tell, if tell you say anything this. wrong, Dan will. Tell us, tell us, I want to know about this warehouse, because I don't, you have a f***ing warehouse shipping merch? That means you're like a f***ing big deal now. No, I'm not. But but we... You're, we if you own a f***ing warehouse, you're shipping a lot of shit. We are, yeah. We've, we've scaled a lot, and we got really lucky. Um, we were able to transition over from getting pretty f***ed. We were, we were actually, it was actually pretty scary during COVID, because... Both of our business models, which was we were at a studio, right, where we were doing work for like Amazon and like Hershey's and shit, doing like uh, production shit, that totally shut down. We lost all of our revenue off that. I had to lay off the whole staff eventually. And we transitioned to merch and we transitioned to brand side ads. And it went, it's fantastic. Like it's really good. And, that, and a lot of that was like, so like one, one crazy thing, right, is like this time last year, 90% of our business was Twitch. Mm -hmm. and, and and now now like less than 10 percent is like we're almost totally out of that game and hopefully we'll be able to be soon <laughs> oh you think wow. you're so you're selling the business Devin then? doesn't believe what, in the future of twitch no, 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 wow. i'm talking about um like in terms of how we get our like how we do our business we're not doing much business on twitch anymore do so you, you think want to be out completely I would, ideally would like to be out of doing marketing on twitch yeah except for the paid ad side yeah uh -huh. Like direct influencer for sure. What's so up? Who are, oh, yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, he wants to talk about your warehouses. Go ahead. Okay. Why? No, no. I'm sorry. Steve has something really insightful no, no, to no, say no. right now. I, I, no, 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 no. no, no, no. Wait, Listen no, no, to me. No, no, no. I real quick. Okay. This thing Steve's about to ask you, it's gonna fucking blow your mind that okay. anyone could even come up with a question this intelligent. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, so hold on. Question, it, yeah. It's like amazing. Go ask, ahead. Yes. Let's hear it. Hold on. My question was. Yeah. So my question was. Do you actually own the warehouse or do you, do you rent it? Oh no, see that, that was my question. But Steve, go ahead, what's your no, question no, no, that's like no, super no, no. insightful? No, 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 because you, you want to interrupt me. Own the warehouse? No, 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 no. No, your does question, see that's my own question. own the warehouse or did you just rent I it? I can't I'm believe so it. curious. That, mine was a reasonable <laughs> question because that's mental. It's that's really mental. important. Like it's going to make a big impact. Oh, on I, I see. Do you see what's happening here, Devin? Is he had a stupid question <laughs> no, and now he's afraid to ask it <laughs> because I, I hyped it up a little bit. It's going to make a huge impact on how I feel about his warehouse. I need to know if it's actually in your name if you own it or just like a rented warehouse. No, no, Devin, see, I was like, I was shocked because that means you're a you're fucking killing it and congratulations but what he's doing is he's a fucking moron oh, hold on it's his mom one second wait what his mom what that means his wife came in oh uh jesus <laughs> yes the old the old rivalry <laughs> um sorry so this stupid motherfucker okay he was gonna ask you something okay but he either he can't remember what it was it was so stupid when i called him out on how stupid his thing was he now he's now he's now pivoting to like oh, what about the warehouse do you own it i already asked that steve come up with your own shit he can't do it he's on the spot so what is it steve wait now what it's gonna be is a long ramble that turns into the warehouse go ahead steve <laughs> i got you you stupid fuck you can't get me you just got got um no, so my question... What are you typing? Yes. Yeah, so my question was going to be, because you talk about getting out of the Twitch business, is yeah. what is the, like, descent of Twitch going to look like? Because they're probably on a downward swing. I think we can all agree with that, right? 
Um, yeah. <clears throat> the question is, do you think there's going to be like a huge like reformation period where they're like fire the CEO, bring a new management, try to shake things up completely? Is it just going to get like slowly axed? It feels like it's too big of a business for Amazon to just like terminate. Yes. I, yeah. Are they going to shut down Twitch? Devin, new CEO. Jesus. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I wish it was a huge dramatic flare out like the end of a star, but I feel like it's just going to be a gradual migration over to other live stream services as stuff that we find valuable about Twitch right now, like Twitch Prime, gets depreciated. It, it seems like that's the conversation at Amazon right now is like, how the f do we justify? Yeah. There's no so there's there's two different metrics they use right there's there's ROI and there's ROAS like return on advertising spend mm -hmm. and the real problem right now is ROAS is, is is that the amount of money that goes into Twitch to basically serve as a marketing arm for the media uh, side of Amazon which got moved over from AWS just doesn't make sense mm -hmm. it just costs too much to run Twitch Prime have you heard so of the um I don't know how many streamers you're in contact with anymore, but have you heard the differences between what the contracts, the exclusivity contracts they're offering now to Twitch streamers versus like two or three years ago? Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, we're negotiating some of those. Oh my God, dude. So the new now? trends I've heard are right. so right, like, Devin. like orders of magnitude less than what was being like offered yeah. before. All right, so what's a, deal, what's a deal that Steve could expect if he was unbanned and not Steve? I, they would never Twitch. cut me a deal. No, no I'm saying Steve, but not okay. What can Crip get today? If assuming you got I don't think Crip concurrence. would get a deal. I, like yeah, well, they're, they're not even cutting yeah. deals for people like like Asma Gold or Trainwreck, and these are like huge yeah, streamers. Yeah. I, I don't Absolutely. even know if um yeah sorry well, those, like those heard, guys are like problematic though right? I'm saying a non -prob problematic. No, Steven's 100 percent right. A lot's changed. So they, they, it's literally like an it's like they're just not paying anymore. Like there isn't yeah. a budget available for those mm -hmm. broadcasters anymore. Yeah. And the, the, like people have, a lot has changed at Twitch in the sense that like paying somebody to stream like no maker no no longer makes sense for their business model, and and can't be justified to like people that are controlling those budgets. And 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 yeah, what Steven said is like, like the offers are insultingly low. I, How I mean, low are we talking? Tell, well, why don't you get say Dan, twenty k viewer streamer, completely brand safe, never a bad thing said. What deal am I getting offered? That, so a, um, Devin can tell me if this yeah. is because I don't I don't want to get into specifics and I and I always hear like murmuring okay. so okay but like so as like you might have been a streamer that two or three years ago like Devin can tell me if this is an appropriate scale maybe you would have gotten literally like a very small seven figure contract like a million dollars over like two years or something and if you were to negotiate from a similar position today they might give you like really favorable CPMs or something like that's the difference in terms of like how dramatically shit the contracts have gotten or they just won't offer you anything even if you were getting huge offers before. Yeah, I, I would be surprised if there was anybody outside of the top 50 broadcasters that could even consider a cash deal. And oh, yeah, you know and even for top 50, like XQC is publicly like mumbled that it's like, f and I think he's still the largest streamer on the platform in terms of your hours. So, yeah. Uh, Devin, back in the day, you talked about there being some, I'm not going to get this right. There was some media something, media, not media buyer, but like there was a, an MC, not an MCN, I don't know, like you could come into Twitch and if you had a certain amount of people, a number of streamers underneath you, you could have some value, right? If you say, oh, I represent all 30 of these streamers and they, they do this, does that type of thing still exist or what? In terms you know, of agencies? I guess if it's an agency deal, yeah, something like that. So there are two types of agencies. There are the talent agencies that represent broadcasters exclusively, and then there's the people that represent brands. And Twitch only really cares about the second one now. We used to, I know this because we used to be both. So we, we transitioned from one to the other. And the people that run the brand side, they control the advertising spend generally. So that's much more interesting from a sales perspective. But the, ex the people that run the talent on exclusives basically just kind of do the back and forth. I'm not sure that answers your question. Okay. Well, like, no, but that's fine. So, uh, sorry, sorry. Like, what, like, what do you, uh, I, when you say like they have value, do, do, do you mean? Like, I thought you said that you could make money. Like, if I came in there and I could just like get twenty streamers under my fucking whatever, that I could go to Twitch and demand money and they would pay you just oh, no, by shot, virtue. That's all over. So, what was that called back in the day? Did was that ever a thing? Never so, mind. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, like, if you start an agency, you had like twenty. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, if you had like twenty people under you that were like like significant streamers you could do like group negotiation deals and maybe uh, but i've never seen one of those happen they're all done on an individual basis 
They used to do that, but that was a long time ago. Like the last I heard about that was like for StarCraft teams and shit. Twitch would like pay out like that's money. Like, that's like, before different. I was in the business. Yeah, yeah, I've never even heard of that. That's crazy. Because that's I think the... they used to pay, but I think that's because we were literally like friends with like Kevin and shit. Like they would pay like a small fee every month to like root gaming and stuff. Like they would pay out to like actual like teams and shit. But yeah, I don't know if they do that group shit anymore. Uh, um. So what else are you doing day to day? Are you still in Seattle or did you move to Nevada or LA or what? I moved to Texas, Texas. Austin, we, I'm imagining? No, um, Dallas. Oh. And we, like, dude, we had, for the same square footage in Seattle, we were paying $14,000 a month and Facebook was like trying to take our space. And then we came here and for the exact same square footage, we're paying 3,400. <laughs> well, Dallas is like, Stupid. Dallas and Houston are like insanely cheap, like to buy real estate out there. It's like it's I looked at it. Awesome. Isn't there like yeah. fourteen skyscrapers for sale right now in Dallas? Oh, I don't know. Um, we're we're kind of out in the more rural area. I think but... Dallas has more skyscrapers for sale than any other city in the United States. Really? Shit. Seattle was getting bad. Um, there yep. it was kind of getting tough to like go outside. I mean, like, like, I didn't really feel, like, safe at night anymore. Not to sound like a... I don't know. It is what it is. That's just how I felt. And, and you know, there, there's they were really not putting a lot into the city. Um, mm -hmm. Even Amazon closed its offices, I think, because the, they were dealing with crime. I think there was a couple articles about that. There's this Twitch streamer who owns a game store down there, like, in, like, mm -hmm. like way downtown Seattle. And there's just, like, clips every week of people just walking in and stealing shit it's crazy based well hey what do you think what do you think of gamestop what what about it you know damn well what about it bro i'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you i my takes on stocks and any kind of investing at, at this point i've realized are total dog shit i know nothing about it i'm staying in my lane and making cash off my business i've lost everything in cryptocurrency i've lost it i haven't sold but wow. I mean, hold on I'm, wait 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 you haven't you haven't lost you've sold okay Okay, I guess that's Wait, how? You I thought you had like close to a million dollars at one point in Ethereum, didn't you? I a lot of I I had, Dan. <laughs> it's past tense, my friend. It's and that is all that is all Wait, gone. So you now. never you never sold any at I all never along sold the way? Any I never sold a dollar of any crypto. So I I, I have a lot of chain link, I have a lot of Ethereum, I have uh, some Bitcoin, probably like twenty percent. And it's coming. I, it's coming back, don't worry. I do you think so? Because I'm really worried that FTS FTX was like a systemic risk, like in the same way that Mt. Gox was. I mean, like, you, it's you always been. There's always been systemic risks. That's the nature of crypto. That's the beauty of crypto, though, right? It's not really the beauty of crypto. Crypto is 100% dependent on the ability for people to easily and effectively turn crypto into cash and vice versa. And also, most importantly, crypto depends on new lifeblood coming in and thinking it's a good investment and yeah. being able to easily buy it. And if that no longer is the case, if it's like super difficult to create a Coinbase account and put $500 into Bitcoin or Ethereum, you're fucked, okay? And what that I'm... actually is happening a lot. Yeah. I love the people saying ROFL and LOL. God, it just pissed me off. I know so much more about this than anyone, than all of you. Combined in chat. What I'm worried about is like what Dan is saying is that the sort of fundamental trust that is that has built cryptocurrency, which is these easy exchanges like Coinbase or F, it kind of got shaken with FTX and might cause people to not invest for many years. You know what? I'm going to go with the take that I gave on crypto like three years ago. The problem with crypto was that all of the people that got hyped over it and were talking about it so much never, ever, ever treated it as a currency they always treated it as a uh, commodity for speculation that's it and that's, that's been that's been the problem yeah. from from beginning to end like if you're buying crypto and your hope is that you're going to get rich or it's going to increase you are the problem and you are the reason why crypto is not going to because like um because like that, it's, it's just supposed to be a currency that was like the dream originally of crypto it's not supposed to be a way to get rich it's just supposed to be a way to buy and sell things with like unregulated transactions that can't be marked and can be done anywhere in the world that was supposed to be the whole point but like currencies so that wildly fluctuate like all the time and shit are always going to be destined for failure because now you're going to have a whole bunch of actors that are stepping in that are treating these products as, as yeah as like commodities that are you know vehicles for speculation which is going to drive the price up and cause people to scam people and do a whole bunch of other like crazy shit in my opinion i i think that's a really good take i i would be curious what you think about 
what what I ran into was, and this is going to sound so stupid, but I really did invest in Ethereum because mm-hmm. of the underlying smart contracts, and I thought that that was going to not revolutionize, but it would change some things in the business world that would be like discernible. But it got all pushed out by what you just talked about. Yeah, I mean, Maybe I don't, yeah. I don't disagree. Um, there has to be some fundamental value. There is in, a fundamental in, value, and yeah. any, even in things like NFTs, there are there is fundamental yeah. value. There's like unique things that they offer that you couldn't do otherwise. Um, but the uh, but the, yeah, they're just it's all like it's all um, Dan. What Dan was describing, I, I'm, think, I'm sure he's aware. But what Dan was describing was a Ponzi scheme, right? Like it relies on more adopters coming in and driving the price up over and over and over again, so other people can cash out until inevitably somebody's going to be left bag holding at the end, you know. But people would view like the utility of Bitcoin as like the price, and that's just so cancerous. Like if you want Bitcoin to be a stable currency, you shouldn't be cheering for it to two x its value every six months because that's the worst f-ing currency in the world. You're inviting so much. F- in when you can make so much money off of it you know totally i never understood the value of bitcoin except from like a third world like third world perspective where people could like have a currency that wasn't attached to like really weird government currency I, I, like, Devin, the, the biggest but, advantage in my yeah. opinion outside of doing bitcoin that, specifically like no, no, I, but any 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 crypto yeah. Okay. You know, the biggest advantage of crypto in general, outside of anything you can do with logic, like if this, then that, is that it reduces, I'm sorry, not reduces, removes and changes the risk from the seller to the buyer. Okay, so right now, if I buy something from your store, Devin, and you send me a product, there's a chance that you're going to get fucked, that you're going to, that money will get charged back because I stole someone's credit card. And at that point, you don't have the money and you don't have the product anymore. Okay. What crypto fundamentally changes on that is that now the risk is on the sender. So now when I go and I I send crypto to your store, okay, you have that and I have no mechanism or chargeback to get my money back at the end of the day. Yeah, but the funny thing is that like what's going to happen and what was already kind of happening with crypto is what people do is they just start slowly rebuilding financial systems. Like I, I haven't looked, but I, you know, I'm guessing there probably is already some service where you can transfer your crypto through a third party that for a small fee will like guarantee the transaction or like can refund it or something. Like I bet somebody's made, like people are just slowly rebuilding and rediscovering why traditional financial well, systems work the way that they do, you know? Yeah, there's that. And then Dan, like, what are your thoughts on the, re- the reality being that like, while cryptocurrency and its fundamental technology allows you to do that, in practice, it's exchanges that are moving this currency around for people to make it easier for them to do because very few people build wallets and do all that custom shit. And then you have the centralization of the exchanges and you get exactly what FTX was. So that, that's why right I'm now, about crypto. I, right now there's one company, I don't care what anyone says, there's one company that props up crypto essentially worldwide. But it's, And I say worldwide because it, if the US abandons crypto, the confidence in it is going to absolutely uh, resonate to every other country on earth and it's going to go to shit. Are you thinking... That country, that company is Coinbase. Oh, if okay. Coinbase is the one actual legitimate public company that lets you turn dollars into Bitcoin and Bitcoin into dollars, and if that goes away, it doesn't matter when people are like, oh, well, well, you have Bitrex in in Germany or or Binance out of what it doesn't matter. Okay, Coinbase is the one company that gives a tremendous amount of uh, legitimacy to this, and if that was to somehow get killed and it is getting a little bit frisky. I was reading a story on Twitter from uh, someone who had ha- has had a Twitter, or sorry, a Coinbase account for years and years and years. And they were trying to, um, they were trying to cash out. And the KYC that they were going through, know your customer, was unbelievable. It mm-hmm. wasn't just like what you would go through for a bank account. It, first off, he already had an account, but the KYC that they are going through now is like mental. It's like, where do you make your money? Can I see, you know, uh, income and profit and loss statement for you for the last year? Where did all this money come from? And for this guy, he just had a donation button on his website, which was like, you know, donate crypto to me. And, um, you know, and that's it. So the idea of like, you can now get anonymous crypto donations might be gone as well. So anyways, my whole point behind this is I feel Coinbase props up a lot of this stuff because at the end of the day, if people can't turn crypto into the dollars uh, in a safe way in the United States, that's a huge problem because the amount of actual okay, yeah. projects using Ethereum or anything along those lines, not so many and not, yeah. certainly not that impactful. Mm-hmm. 
There, there's a couple of things going on with Coinbase because they're a public company and they also have, oh, they just pay a lot of attention to they, uh, they individually audit all I'd say all of their transactions publicly and that's all available and they also back it via US dollars. But then you have situations where like Brian Armstrong is like selling a ton of shares after the FTX thing. They're talking about like contagion coming over from FTX because apparently like all these exchanges were invested and leveraged into each other. I, I don't say I don't think that's a existential threat to Coinbase, but I, I just I worry about cryptocurrency as a from a trust perspective, like from a from a macroscopic trust perspective. Literally, a person deciding to put money into something, even Coinbase, after seeing five million people get fucked over by a dude in the Bahamas. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You know, the, well, I mean, I, look at how much is powered this. by like like Elon Musk, like tweeting about Dogecoin and shit. Like, even I had friends that were talking about, I don't know if anybody remembers this, but people were like buying Dogecoin in advance because they thought Elon Musk was going to mention it on like Saturday Night Live. Like, just like the dumbest shit, the way that people treat this shit. But so I got down. If you, um, if we remember like a while back, I was talking about Trump and, and back when Trump was president about Bitcoin. Really, all of this takes to see this industry go to shit is back then I would say all it takes is for Trump to tweet out tomorrow saying, just got news that Al Qaeda and the Taliban are using Bitcoin to have child sex slaves do suicide bombs in Chicago. And that's that's the end of crypto pretty much at that point. All, all it takes is literally one Trump tweet and the value of crypto is going down by like 80% overnight. That's it, right? And that's a fragile ecosystem to have something like that. Um, so th th that's really my, it's just speculators built on speculators built on speculators. And then there's like 2% of the people that actually use this for a real utility. And then you have like 50% of those one to 2% people that are like, oh yeah, it's a real utility. I'm doing NFTs, which are like the stupidest thing ever. It's just, Oh, God. Yeah. It was an expensive lesson for me to learn that I really don't know what the f I'm talking about with investing. I need to stay in my lane. And I still think now that, like, in terms of building capital, I, I don't want to pretend to be an investor and I might as well just sit and work on my business, which is generating cash flow instead of, like, jerking off in tech stocks, stocks and losing 50%. <laughs> and, you know, I wish that, like, more people it. were, like, honest about that, too, though. Because, like, the, the scary thing about finance is that, like, right now, like you have the ability to log on and press the right buttons to become a billionaire, right? Like if you knew the right answers, you could short, you could leverage enough and you could become a billionaire in like a week. If you leverage enough, you could do it 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And like having that potential available is like a very, very hard thing mentally to like deal with. Cause it's like, it's right there. I just need to make the right trades and people removing all the stops and barriers from people making those trades. I just think it's bad for people's minds. Cause anybody can bullshit themselves and anything like, Oh shit. Like I just need to short the right thing. I just need, you know, the right option. I just need the right thing and I can do this. Like, and yeah, I think that's, I think it's really, really bags. I think that's, that explains like that whole GameStop stop and all the people that believe that shit. Yeah. It's worse for, because when you become a business owner and like they give you like, like it's okay. Now you're at a, you're, 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 you're and bank tells you you're an accredited investor and all this stuff and like you like you think that you can like I, I think that I can make sophisticated financial decisions because I'm running a PL and I'm doing all this shit. Mm -hmm. And it's just in reality it's a totally different game. I don't know fuck all about it. Like, I just I don't know anything about stocks. Like I you think you I think I did because everybody was winning. Yeah. And then no, when it's I, ninety percent of this shit, Devin, is just I'm like, like I don't know shit about this. It, all all of it is just like you know do people want to buy it? Do people want to sell it? That's it. It doesn't matter. The underlying fundamentals don't matter. What utility it has doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anything ever except like, is this hot? Do people want to get in? Or, or yeah, are they fear of missing out or fear of f***ing up? That's it. That's all that drives all stocks, all crypto, everything along those I lines. I'll never understand that. I, I think what I understand is how to sell somebody a product or service and like the build value in that. And that's just what I'm going to stick in. But that, you know what that's translated into is I just sit on a fucking shit ton of cash with no idea what to do with it. So I, I, I think T-bills, I don't know. What that, I'm just, I have never, I've not solved Real that. estate, real estate, man. I don't I've been putting, real estate. I don't get it's, it. It's not, know. it's not hard. Listen, you want to go in in some places, let me know. I'm looking at a lot of stuff I've How done. Many people have lost their ass in the, in, in the housing market. Stop, recently. wait, stop. That's my one trigger. Hold on. 
Sam, I'm sorry. What no, no, it's okay. Right? Fucking Crap idiots right. that buy a house and then live in it are not doing real estate, okay? For some <laughs> reason, everybody's deluded themselves. I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, like, I'm really big into real estate. Really? Yeah, I bought my house. I've got a three. That's not real estate. Real estate is when you buy or lease other properties and other people live in it and you generate cash flow of it, okay? Saying that the, you buy a house and then you live in it, calling that real estate is like buying a taxi car and parking in your garage and never giving rides to anybody and saying you have a taxi and that's how you make money. It just doesn't make any sense, okay? Sorry. Wait, who, got, yeah. who said that? Who said I what? Didn't say that. Wait, who's who is suggesting buying doing real estate like living in it? Oh no, no, Dest um not Destiny, sorry, Jesus. Um Devin just mentioned that like a lot of people quote unquote lost their ass on, on the housing market or whatever. That is true, but that's like dumb f that buy a house and then try to sell their house. And these guys are moving to and from primary residence, right? They're not talking about like rental properties or anything like that, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. I was referring uh, to some of the mm -hmm. like YouTube people who are historically known for that, like Ben Mala, who like uh, are, are really down a lot because uh, the the market is bad. But I, I just, so, I'm talking out of my element. I don't know anything. No, about No, no, it's fine. Listen, right now you can do some logic. So right now, um, if you want to get frisky, and I'm not willing to get this frisky, but I, I'm close to being this frisky, is the office real estate market right now is in this like once in a lifetime shit show at this point right now. So right now, build the office buildings that let's say uh, in 2015, maybe they were worth $10 million today. You're looking at them for probably 40% of that, 4 million, okay? That's how much value has been lost as a result of people moving out of the office, uh, you know, partially from COVID, partially from a lot of uh, work from home type of situations. There is some, huge value to be had but you're not going to cash flow for a while um so that's kind of something to consider right there so if you if you have a big appetite for risk getting into office space could work um but it's I risky it's risky because yeah go ahead yeah one is um do you think that's sound advice for someone that doesn't fundamentally understand it like me? And then second of all, do you... Well, what, I don't understand it and I don't do it, so no. <laughs> well, but what, and, and then secondly is like, what what is your... Is your expectation that everything is going to come back and that this is just a, a dip? So, ooh. Uh, I think that in certain areas... So right now, I would 100%... If there was a decent opportunity to buy an office building in San Francisco, I would buy one right now. Here, well, sure. here's the one thing that I think is a little bit scary that might have actually changed the game forever is work from home might start fundamentally altering the composition of cities and downtown areas, right? Like if that work from home shit stays permanent, then offices might not recover and you might see different layouts for cities or like people moving out more than they would have otherwise because they don't have to be like located in an area for work. What I don't. Would, I don't. I think work from home is going away. Do you think work from home will go away? Yeah, and you can see that when people are taking over companies now, and that's the first thing that they're ending. The simple fact of it. I mean, I, I really don't want to have this argument with chat, especially right now. Is you get more productivity and more work done when people are coming into the office, and that's just it. I'm not going to have the an argument about it. It's just one, true. one would think, but there have been studies out of Microsoft and 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 also in Japan that have shown that Microsoft did a big work from home study and showed that productivity actually went up. Now I fund, uh -oh. like as a business owner, I agree with you, Dan. I don't understand how it would not be the case, but it seems like the actual empirical evidence that we have is that the productivity it, it, it increases. But that doesn't make sense to me as a business owner because my, my employees don't do shit. I if, feel if like I, it's if, gotta be like, it has to be probably depending on the type of business. That'd be my guess. Like there's probably some business that lends itself really well to work from home. And there's probably some stuff that like doesn't at all. That that's why I think it's interesting that Microsoft ran it because that's a tech company that you would think it represents a lot of the type of work that gets done in the knowledge economy. So it, it seems like it could transfer over. Let me find what I'm talking about. Um, because I think when people go to the office, they probably work an hour or two. And most of it's like collaborative meetings that don't get anything done. If you if if you're a remote, if you're a good remote manager, and you set people to KPIs, I think you can get a lot done in remote. I don't even think you need to have the argument over um, what gets more work done or not. It's just really at the end of the day, it's what does the CEO want. What does the executive team want? And I think that's going to be a resounding. They want people in the office. Yeah, but it, I think the at day. the end of the day, it'll also come down to 
like certain types of like product. Like if it truly is better to have the problem here is here's like one problem that might be a thing. Work from home might only be better for employees. <laughs> and if that's the case, then people will bring it back. Like say you say you can get let's say that you can do eight hours of work in an office in eight hours, but let's say at home, let's say you can get that same work done in like, you know, two or three hours, they'll just bring you into the office because they're not it's not like they benefit from you getting your shit done faster or whatever. Or or allocating your time better, you know? Okay, cool. I, uh, sorry sorry, can I I, I didn't mean to do whatever like, you say, want. Okay, cool to you. Sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I bet, okay, cool. I found the study. <laughs> I was like looking at it. Um, the, okay, so I, I was uh, a little bit wrong on this conclusion. So short term productivity goes up, but long term creativity goes down. According to a study published in Na Nature Human Behavior, 61,000 Microsoft employees in the US gathered between December 2019 and June 2020 um, revealed that while hours worked went up, when employees shifted to working from home, communication, particularly in real time conversations, fell significantly. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that there's like there's weird economic effects. That, yeah, there's weird economic effects. As stupid as it sounds, like there are weird effects that happen when people are just close to each other, talking to each other, that are like economic yeah. multipliers. Um, like even having like businesses located in the same city next to each other causes like really interesting types of collaborations. That Two people meet at a cafe and talk about some plan and mm -hmm. then do something. Yeah, it's like it's like probably immeasurable, right? Yeah. Or no, yeah. no, it it is measurable and it is measured. Like there it are is. like those like. I don't, Rage Pope would know. I'm sure there are like some NBER studies on it or whatever, but like you can literally look for like having like having businesses different, like similar types of businesses located in a cluster next to each other, like causes efficiency gains in the businesses. I guess it's a well studied thing. Or yeah, it, like, I mean, you know. I guess it, this is basically confirming what you're saying is it was, we believe, so based on this research, we believe that the shift to less rich communication media may have made it more difficult for workers to convey and process complex information. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what you're talking about is that proximity, yeah. like kind of conveys that power. But know? not just intra business, but inter business, like even between companies, like having two companies in the same area can cause like benefits yeah. and gains and productivity you know, and like efficiency and all, all sorts of weird shit. A lot of this comes down to like, it's almost an agile versus like scrum type of development thing. but. When you look at this, it's like, is it more efficient in some cases or what say all cases to work from home? The answer might be yes, but it just it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Companies are not run as hyper efficient machines. There's going to be meetings that happen all the time that are not needed because management wants them. They want to be briefed on something and it's a waste of time for someone else. Um, I, I feel like in this circumstance, you're going to see management still wanting people in the same building as a result. Of, I mean, I would right if I had a company of a thousand people. I'm going to want, um, I'm going to want people in the office so I can get a report on what's going on. Or if I want to change something, you're going to want to go and walk over to someone's desk. And I, I feel like even if you're losing 5% or 10% productivity, and I don't even think that you are in that case, I think that management's going to make the decision to do that. But all this comes, comes down to at the end of the day, what we're talking about is, is office space, uh, going to be, um, continue to rise or yeah, exactly. Well, my question is, Stephen, you were saying that the layout of cities might change. Let's assume that remote work does mm -hmm. encompass this huge, like, kind of cultural shift. What the f happens to all those buildings? What do we do with? Well, them? it's not even just the buildings, like, but I remember, like, in happen. New York, uh, they were complaining about this that, like, work from home also destroys all of the service shit around there too, because people aren't going yeah. to Starbucks, people aren't going to restaurants, people aren't like, yeah, so. So what what happens? Um. I mean, I, mean like, I don't know. Do we do, or is it just like China where we have these like, like huge skyscrapers that just nobody's in them? Well, I mean, I imagine that. I mean, like the U.S. industry or U.S. It's all private, right? It's going to be sold and demolished and shit. Like people are going to want to put new stuff there. Maybe. Well, like skyscrapers, I think you can expect that there's going to be, you know, essentially rezoning, hopefully, or something along those lines going to happen. You know, the best part of this day is all these fucking <laughs> work from home wage cucks that are just arguing their little fucking hearts out. Like, no, no, I'm more productive at home. I'm going to have a raging hard on when your fucking wage slave boss makes you fucking come back into the office and he's getting you there to fucking go clean up the toilets because that's your fucking job so shut the fuck up stay in your lane and remain silent all, all right, right? one sec jesus fucking christ you okay now having people no. like in the office actually does sound nice cake i want to be able to look over your shoulder and ask you questions about like Do we need that line of code? How many? Lines? A lot of employees refuse to come back after uh, work from home. Well, good. Then they get fired, and then they find out. Oh, wait a second. There's not that many work from home jobs in 2026 or whenever all this shit happens. All right, that's all happened. 
But you guys know the best. You guys are all the titans of industry that can controlling the strings and all the other shit. So you know, I should we should be listening to chat here. Destiny, two things. Oh, Number oh. one. Yeah, what's up? Okay. Uh, I want to come back later to discuss your debate with Nuance Bro later oh on God. this evening. Yeah, yeah, I've got a lot of thoughts on that. Number two, Dan, is it possible that empty skyscrapers it. would be like converted into like commercial or not commercial, but um, residential spaces? Oh, like definitely, definitely possible. But really, here's a problem with that. So if you look at so in, in big cities. Right, you're going to have skyscrapers, and typically the zoning there is going to be commercial on the first two floors, and mm -hmm. then office. And, and commercials is uh, zoned differently than office for whatever reason. So the question is, can you have that office space converted back into residential? So you can, okay. But the problem is, is that there's actually radically different requirements for egress uh, oh. in in residential buildings than you would have in office buildings. So it's like a complete. Um, I don't want to say complete regutting, but a lot of times it's not even feasible to work it in, especially when it comes to things like um, plumbing. Uh, electrical would probably be okay, but plumbing is going to be a real fucking problem, right? Because you're going to need every apartment right. in that thing is going to have to have a shower, a sink, toilets, etc. So you're so moving would, from just a little bit, yeah. So like the municipality would have to rezone it from commercial to residential or some sort of hybrid, and then well, they, and it would also need that's uh, when you do a rezoning like that also. You need to have um, that almost always has to go to a vote. That's not something not that sure. a committee is going to have uh, approval to do. So, like, I, I just moved to Charlotte, and the reason I ask is like, it seems like everywhere I look, they are building high rise residential spaces like condos and whatnot. Not not skyscrapers full on, but like multi, multi, multi story. Like High 10 story rises. buildings or less? Yeah, so it made me wonder. I'm like, well, hell, if any of these buildings go derelict and they're relatively new, would it be just, instead of just them sitting there, I wonder if they would try to convert the shit to, uh, like, condos or whatnot? Because it seems like people well, will spend a shit ton of money, like, to live in a downtown high-rise. Yeah, but the question so, is going to be, like, wouldn't the demand go down if those if like let's say everyone's doing work from home like part of the reasons why people want to live downtown is because it's easy to get to work right if you are so but if those I, jobs don't exist anymore sure. is that going to start to change i figured well, it'd I mean, also be like a status thing too like oh shit i live in a you know a first ward high rise in downtown miami downtown charlotte downtown you know whatever well it's also um yeah i can't underscore the value of these votes and trying to get votes for um this shit like if you're Let's say you have a skyscraper and you're like, hey, I want to convert this from office to residential. How many people do you think are in favor of that as far as the voting block in that ward? Not sure. I mean, I, I assume it'd be better than just sitting there. But so, so no, because you're it's crazy. So first off, you wouldn't be like, oh, the affordable housing people are going to love this. No, they're going to hate it. I don't know why they should love it, but they're going to hate it unless you're willing to dedicate like 30 percent of your building to below market units. OK, so they're not going to like it. The other property owners in the area are not going to want it, that especially those who have residential properties because they want to continue renting their shit and they don't want more competition. So they're not going to like it. The mm. single family people are not going to like it because they don't want more people lowering their house values. There's literally no one who wants to vote for you turning office space into residential, right? Yeah. So the only place well, that this the, type of works... To be clear, there are people that would want to vote for it, but the problem is those people are future residents, so they're not voting, right? The yeah, biggest sure. gains to like better housing policy are people that don't live there yet, so they don't have a say, basically. It's always the complicated part of it, you know? Gotcha. Well, then, if, it, if we don't see like a mass migration back to... Uh, office work which I, I agree i'm like where i work my company the ceo is trying to push everybody back or as many people back as possible but so far they're honoring commitments that they made to uh various departments who, which transition to remote work full time it's part of the reason why i moved from my previous city and state to uh north carolina um but they're, they're definitely trying to usher people back uh now of course the headquarters where i work it's like this that that entire facility was built in like the 30s and it's been since like retrofitted but i mean that's a lot of brick and mortar but if they don't if they don't get bodies back in there is there any like i don't what 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 are they going to do with those buildings then if if it's not if it's not easy or virtually impossible to convert it into residential spaces will they just sit there and collect dust 
Right, they can't sit there and collect dust. There's gonna be some better utilization for them, right? Like somebody yeah. will do something with it, they have to, because otherwise it's just That's sitting there like a draining money on whoever's got it on their books, right? That's what I'd assume, but yeah. since you guys are more savvy in real estate, I was just curious like what not the me. what the trend was. Not, not me. Yeah. I'm making some oh me, hold on one sec. I'm um I'm really big on real estate right now. I've mm -hmm. bought like three or four million dollars of real estate in the last six months. I'm gonna try and do that continuing coming up here uh for probably the next year. I wanna spend at least that much, if not more. Um, but so far, most of what I've done has been residential. I've done some buildings that have commercial on mm -hmm. first floor, but um, strip clubs, right? Uh, nah. Uh, although I, I brought it up to my wife, like, "Hey, oh, what about if we, what about if we do a uh, a strip club?" And she she didn't say no right away. She's like, "Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's good good money in that." And I was like, "You know, that, so I can run that, right?" And she's like, "That that's gonna be a Dan's chain. It's gonna you heard it here first, folks. It's gonna be the start of a new enterprise." Yeah, I mean, she's uh, rough, and it's in her blood to run one of those, so she probably thought it was a really good idea. So I, I admire your commitment to greater risk. Which I don't think it's I don't really, think it's greater it, risk. You can find Devin. You can find areas. You probably know areas. Like think about where you grew up. Think about. Um, I, here's the thing, right? I know what you're. You might have been about. talking about proposing a strip club to your to your I, wife at greater I, risk. Let's look at hour per hour value, right? Do you think there's any, this is the conclusion I came to. Do you think there is anything I can do that would be more valuable with my time than increasing the valuation of my company and working on my equity? Um, so what I'm suggesting to you doesn't involve you doing any work of at all. Of course it does. <laughs> very, very <laughs> little. I have a management no company. Guy right now. <laughs> For no money down, you two can become rich. No, not, no, definitely money down. Definitely. You said you have a lot of money in cash right now. No? I do. Yeah. Okay. So you have money sitting there actually doing nothing. Well, when I say doing nothing, I mean, of course, it's becoming worth less every day. Yeah, it's losing. So, <laughs> so the idea is, you know, let's say you have a million dollars. Okay. You can parlay that easily into a $5 million building or maybe not a $5 million building, but certainly a $3 million building you could go and buy with that million dollars. And you go and you do that. And you can, let's say, depending on where you buy, a low risk place is going to have a lower cap rate, a high risk place, a higher one. You find something in the middle or depending on your comfort level, you go in there and you acquire a property. Hopefully you're getting a cap that's like a six or, six or above. And then essentially, not only is your money now every month going to give you uh, like two grand back, you're also paying off a mortgage. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> so not, not only so are you you're good. Yeah, not only are you going to be making money, you're going to be paying off a mortgage and you have a building. Do you know one of the only things that there is that actually stays up with inflation is real estate? I understand Almost. what you're saying, but what I'm saying is that and you don't have to do any work at all. I do. I've got to find the building. I've got to figure out the cap that you have to do negotiate that I've got yeah, like, OK, but pound for pound, hour per hour, right at the at the percentage that my company is growing. Putting mm. that time into growing that business is the wisest investment choice. That's the conclusion I came to because I don't know shit about these other things. So there's going to be like a, a there's going to be like of. there's going to be a function of there's going to be some investment you can do business, but at some point you're going to have so much money laying around that it might become beneficial like to put some of those hours into real estate, right? See, that's like, the thing is like I don't know if that's the case, right? Like if I can if I can two or three x the valuation of my company every year and and, and like I can get to the point which is like that's like a not even close to what we're doing we're doing more it just doesn't even seem like i, I understand how dumb it sounds right to just have a bunch of cash laying around mm -hmm. but but if you can just generate more and, and and then put it back into your business and keep growing that valuation it just doesn't make sense to me to do anything else maybe that's ignorant but i, I mean I, it's going to be the same argument that you gave a long time ago that was true about streaming right if you do streaming 40 hours a week if you do streaming 39 hours a week and then like youtube one hour a week it's a huge gain for you right like as opposed to doing yeah. like that one extra hour of Ooh. streaming is not like a huge thing. Does that make you sense? You just got devon Devin. Sorry about that. So So like if you're putting like eighty hours a week in your business, doing like seventy eight hours might not be that big of a difference, but the two hours a week you put into like researching like real estate, that might be like a big money multiplier just for money that's already sitting there, maybe. But like if you had like fifty thousand dollars in the bank, probably not worth it. But if you've got like seven figures in the bank, well, it might be worth it, right? Because if let's say you have seven figures in the bank, you're making an average anywhere from seventy to hundred K on your investments. If you could boost that to like two hundred K or something, and that might be really aggressive or whatever. But like there just there might be more options there where it's like, oh, like this is worth the the little bit of extra searching maybe but i don't know i don't do it so, so. But, 
let's explore this because that's a really good point. Like, I, I feel like the reason why that exists in the streaming example is because YouTube is not is a force multiplier where like putting a video out is going to, but I don't know that investments in the same way are like that because what ends up happening with me is I make an emotional decision. I put all my money into fucking waffles or something or Ethereum and then I lose my fucking ass and I'm like, why am I such an idiot? Sure. So like, I mean, if that's your way of investing, then yeah, obviously don't do that. Well, I, that's just a bad yeah, don't idea. do that. <laughs> but you have to be self-aware, right? Like, like it, it's like at some level, I just realize like I'm I'm like a fucking dumbass when it comes to like cash allocation and I just don't seem to be able to get my shit together. And like even when I invest in things that I think are reasonable, like tech companies, they they, they drop off a cliff. And I and I guess like the one thing I've got going is I don't sell. Right, I just hold mm -hmm. on, but well, that's not always good, right? In this case, you <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, I yelled at you. I yell. I screamed at you to sell, Devin. Too. I remember oh, this moment. All of your <laughs> crypto holdings. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I think you did. <laughs> what did you end up doing with that, uh, like g graphics card farm? Um, whole thing got sold. I'm all, oh, really? I'm all out of that. Oh, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll message you about it. Okay. Right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's good shit, man. Good. Job. So. Oh yeah. Devin, okay. why do you not like index funds? <laughs> I do. That's where all, almost all of my non-cash money is in the S and P five hundred. Uh, okay, and why not international? And then, how much cash money you're talking about as a proportion of uh, your net worth? If you're, I'm not going to give you numbers on oh, this. Rage extra. Pope, you're oh, okay, that's yeah. extra right now. Okay, who do you think you're? Who well, you I mean, because if he's saying like I just I'm sitting on all this cash, it seems crazy to me that you're complaining about all of it, but then you I'm have these oh, interesting okay. discussion. Okay. Who not, is this? Guy? Is not a not a good look, Rage Pope. You need to. Sorry, Dan. You need to settle down. Okay. Hold on, just so people don't think he's some random weirdo that just came in. Like Rage Pope has a a great deal of knowledge in this field, and he's not trying to be an asshole. Oh, okay. Mike was doing the uh, the <laughs> fingers. <laughs> he was doing the finger quotations when he said "great deal." So, is know. he a financial advisor of some kind, or not uh, yeah, I work in finance. I'm a portfolio My manager, man. and yeah. like the, the, what I listened to was basically like, "Oh, I just dumped a bunch of money into crypto, and that didn't work out, and then I dumped the money into tech and lost my ass, and then now I just have all this money." So, from what it sounds like, having spoke, spoken to people who sound similar, it just seems like. You're just not doing anything, I guess. That's the impression that I got. I completely understand yeah. why, like, to someone who's sophisticated yeah. like you, I would sound yeah. like a total idiot, and I completely agree. <laughs> I just like, I, but, but, but the reality yeah. is that, like, if I go work eight hours on learning about stocks t tomorrow, I that same eight hours exponentially. The ROI isn't going to be the same as reinvesting into your business, assuming yeah. that you have growth opportunities available, right? Well, yeah, but, exactly. Well said. Okay, yeah, so then, you not find an extra two hours you're not doing work and then put this no it? warhammer is dark tide is a really good game like i got shit right, to do. Well, right, well, well dan dan do it the the rich person way don't you have a person you could put him in contact with that he could pay to help him through no, i do it process? i do it i do it myself uh, i wouldn't pay most financial advisors no no no, not a financial machines. advisor i'm talking about someone that can get him started in real estate no because I, I like it i literally do it myself i have like google alerts and shit like that set all throughout the country on you know when something comes in that meets my criteria of what I'm looking for. And the second it comes up that day, you know, I'm out there, I'm, I'm having people going and looking at it, at that property. That's how you do it. You have to do it yourself. Otherwise, all the profit, you know, keeps getting sucked out. Every step removed you get from the property, you lose more and more money. You don't have a property manager or anything? I do, but that's, that's not a person lost money. Real estate, right? Right, like, when you have a property. That, so well, right, right. I was just to know how much this you thing do. does himself. Yeah, I I can't outsource like like in the same way that I couldn't outsource like running this business like a, a true. Uh, my question to every like quote financial advisor is like, if you are so good at this, why aren't you doing your own techniques and like becoming a billionaire? Right. Well, yeah. usually it's because they don't have they don't have enough money to do it to get started. Uh, That's cool. yeah. <laughs> I just don't I don't think so. Like, well, and also they, it's a lot I mean, easier to so, play with a house's money than your yeah, own. Well, money. The, the yeah, thing is like, so, so my bank accounts they 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 flag these people these uh these investors and they 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 call me up all the time. Not the invest like they're like, yo, you need to like invest with the bank and do these things. Like, I, I have a bunch of distribute because I have this cash that gets distributed to multiple accounts because the FDIC only protects whatever. 250,000 or whatever. So like mm -hmm. um they end up calling me and they're like, "Yo, like you got to invest." And I these are people that like work for like Wells Fargo, Chase, whatever, and I'm like, "Yeah, so like why aren't you doing it? Like you're on you're on like 70k a year, right? Or whatever you make, and why aren't you just investing in the markets or doing this and blah blah blah, right? And no answer ever." Wow. Yeah, like so I I just like I, I can I don't feel like I can pay someone to do this, and I love what I do. I, I like I love my work, and I understand how dumb it sounds. Like everyone is like, "Oh, you should like compound your money and and and, and make it." But it's like, "Dude, like I 
I have enormous growth potential, and I like video games a lot, and I don't want to learn this other stuff, and so I'll just sit on cash. Base. And yeah, it, like I'll, I'll make money faster than inflation burns me. Base. There you go. No, not based. Stupid and lazy pilled. Okay, that's what that is. Not good. I, I, I mean, mean, at the end of the day, you're not gonna you... like min max your life financially and 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 every single thing you do. Right? Right. At the same. very least, just don't go and put it into stocks or something. You know? Well, no, he's not. He it is. The... He's in ETFs. That's what he said. Yeah, uh, I, I have a good amount of money in the S and P 500, which I which I never touch, and then I just don't do anything else. Every other investment I've made um, has not done too well, and that's and I've just kind of identified that I'm an emotional investor but I'm a good business person and I think I should just stay in my lane. And I don't know what's wrong with that. I think everybody like yeah. goes so crazy about like how, how to compound their wealth and make more money and make your money work for you. But none of, none of them, those motherfuckers are actually like making any money. True, they, like, true. Put it in the work. You could pay someone to paint your, you could pay someone to paint the Warhammer figures. Unironically, have time. that is super true. Um, that like the, make your money work for you, make blah, blah, blah. What money, motherfucker? Like, like, this isn't working if you're making like 32K a year or if you've got like $2,000 in the bank that yeah. you cash advance from your fucking visa that's now maxed out, right? Like, yeah, you should work on like, the most important thing you do, it sucks because it's such a boring fucking answer, but the most important thing you should do is that it's that quote of invest in yourself. Like if there's something you do well, like learn that skill, learn a trade, go to college, College, like pick up skills that make you um, like they, that situate you in an ability where you can like actually work on something that will grow a real tangible like good or service for somebody else. The, the obsession over like you know find the right crypto to invest in and do drop shipping and make an Amazon like, like Jesus like like it, you have nothing to show for that in terms of personal development after five years. What like Jesus and you're not gonna you're not getting rich doing that. You're just not like most people aren't. Yeah, yeah and I realized ex exactly. I realized that like this is not my path to getting rich. It, it's I, it's my path to losing that. <laughs> so like if I put like money into this, where it's like I know I'm good at marketing. I know I'm good at like building this service that is very valuable to brands and customers. I'll just do more of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and and and, and I think I, I I know like and nice. I, I'm telling you like every day I get conversations like this. With people coming at me, they're like, yeah, you're sitting in cash. What the f like? What are you doing? But sure. I, I don't know. Like. Yeah, uh, I mean, I know there's people who want to look. Hey, let me ask business, you guys, how do y'all, how do you guys feel? Oh. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Go yeah, I was just going to say, how do you guys feel about the S? No, how, how do you guys feel about the S&P 500? A lot of people have made a lot of money over the past few years, but now a lot of people, I guess, uh, spurned on by Michael Burry, think that it's kind of in a bubble. Like there's not a lot of price discovery because everybody's just willy nilly putting their money into it like a savings account. Uh, how do you guys feel about that going forward? They can go ahead and place all the bets that they want, and we'll see how right they turn out. All right. Does anyone even know? Not to talk any shit, but that Michael Burry dude is fucking insane. <laughs> I wouldn't trust anything <laughs> that guy says about anything. He did really well in the uh, 2007 shit, and he's just riding that wave. But he's he's done a lot. Like here, this is the reality, and this is what I always have to say to people that are making bold predictions like that. If you're making a prediction that bold, then you should be like a millionaire or a billionaire. Like you should be making so much money. Like short the right things. You know, go long with the things that you think are good. Like if you really think that everything is like, then go bet on it somewhere. Like there's gonna be ways to make money off of it. So.